Hi, my dog lovers. Hi, this is Dr. Tobias. Today, I would like to talk to you about why I recommend raw food and why I think raw food is the best for your dog. When I started practicing veterinary medicine, I was one of the greatest promoters of processed food. I was taught that processed food, kibble and canned food is actually the best for my patients. And I believed it and I recommended processed food and I actually even got awards for being one of the highest sellers in the region. Some of you may think that I should not be even sharing this kind of information, but I do because I want you to understand how I made the transition from kibble and processed food to recommending raw diet for more than 20 years. The first experience with the healing effect of food was in my own life when I cured my allergies with just healthy food and uh, restricting certain ingredients such as milk and grain. When it comes to dogs and how I turned into a raw diet feeder and recommending raw food, the story started with Skokie. Skokie was a golden retriever who lived in Whistler, BC, where I used to work. And Skokie came to my practice with an ear infection. The infection was very severe and stubborn and we were not able to resolve it. My client decided to go and see a specialist and the specialist recommended Skokie to have his ear canals removed at the age of two years. Obviously we were shocked, we were not wanting to do that, so we switched Skokie to raw food. In fact, it wasn't me who had the idea, but one of my friends suggested that we should switch Skoki to raw food. And within a month, Skoki was about 50% better, and within two months, he was basically cured, and he never needed to go for surgery. I had a few situations like that in the early stages of me recommending raw food. I started seeing many dogs recovering from serious chronic long-term conditions, whether it was skin, digestive problems, allergies, hormonal problems, autoimmune disease. It was amazing. In the past 20 years, I have been a big promoter of raw or cooked natural diets. And I have gradually come to conclusion that kibble and processed food in general just does not make sense at all. The biggest difficulty I've had was that so many of my colleagues were recommending processed food and still recommend processed food. Pet food companies are stubbornly defending the status quo because they make a lot of money from cheap food. But I know that you dog lovers understand that natural food actually makes the most sense. The best way to explain why dogs should eat predominantly meat-based diet and rabbits and cows and horses should not is really easy. The answer is in the animal's digestive tract. And it starts with the mouth, where you see that they have meat grinding teeth. They're sharper. They can scissor the meat apart, away from the bones. They have very few molars, the teeth that are the best for grinding plant-based material. Molars, on the other hand, are the most common teeth in herbivores because they have to grind and chew grass and grain and seeds and plant material. Canine saliva does not contain amylase. When it comes to cow's salivary glands, they actually release amylase, which is the enzyme that breaks down fiber and carbohydrates. Dogs have very strong gastric juices. Their pH is about 2, highly acidic, meaning that they dissolve protein very easily. But it is very difficult for these acids and the stomach juices dissolve starches, grains, and other plant material. On the other hand, when you look at a cow or other herbivores, they have either large forest stomachs or they have large intestines like rabbits or horses. They're designed to digest food by fermentation. Another reason and sign that dogs should be eating predominantly meat-based diet is pancreas. Pancreas of a dog is very strong, well-developed, and it is very much suited for digesting protein. It is not that suited for digesting carbohydrates, and this is one of the reasons why so many dogs and cats on processed food 
get diabetes because their pancreas gets strained and it gets inflamed. Now, when pancreas is inflamed, it gets selectively destroyed by the immune system. The inflamed cells will get destroyed. Some of the cells are insulin-producing cells, and if they are not there, if they're destroyed, then the dog doesn't produce enough insulin, which leads to diabetes. This is why it is very rare to see a dog that is raw fed having diabetes, and the same applies to cats again. Now, when it comes to cows, they have very low-performing pancreas, but they don't really need it because they have all the fermentation in the gastrointestinal tract. Dogs and carnivores in general have shorter intestines. They pass food very, very fast. And that is very much the opposite of what happens in case of cows and rabbits and horses and other herbivores. Their digestive tract is very long and the passage takes longer and they have very sloppy stool as opposed to dogs that have solid compact stool. I hope that this information will only reassure you that raw food is the best for our dogs. And if you don't feel comfortable about raw food feeding, you can at least feed cooked food. If you're worried about bacteria, I suggest that you go to my blog on bacteria and the unreasonable fear that pet food companies instilled in us about bacteria in raw food. You know, the funny thing is that we would find it very strange to feed cows and rabbits and horses meat, but we don't find it strange to feed completely species inappropriate diet to dogs and cats. Dogs have evolved to deal with the bacteria. They have not evolved to eat kibble, processed food, starches, grain, rendered ingredients that are not suitable for human consumption and should not be eaten by dogs either. If this all makes sense, the next question is, how do you put together healthy, balanced diet for your dog? Well, it's kind of simple. We have created a recipe maker that you can find at recipemaker.peterdubais.com. It'll give you the ingredients that you can select, the portions. It will tell you which food is safe for your dog, which one is not, and which one is toxic. It'll help you to adjust the dose based on your dog's condition, whether he or she is thin or heavy. And it'll also give you some supplements to make your dog's diet complete. So if you're curious, if you want to try our recipe maker, all you need to do is to type recipemaker.peterdubias.com and start. It's all free. And if you like the recipe maker, I would be very grateful if you share with your friends and other dog lovers. And maybe together we can make a huge difference in the health and longevity of your dog, but also other dogs. Give your dog a hug for me and have a wonderful day. Take care. 